Yes, people, welcome to a brand new episode of Titan Talk. Um, we got quite a serious topic today, so just a couple of trigger warnings. Um, we will be talking about sensitive topics such as rape and uh, sexual assault. Um, it's your boy Kyojin. And it's the kid AB, you know how we do. And uh, once again, special guest, guest adds. <laughs> you're, not, bro, you're not a special guest anymore, man. Stop, stop saying it. I am, I am. We're going to say it every week. We actually have a guest on this episode. <laughs> Before we introduce the guest. Right, so this so tweak, as I'm, I'm sure, as many of the viewers know, um, we're like the, what's her name? S- Sarah, Sarah, what's her second Everard. name? Sarah Everard. 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 Oh, yeah, I can't do this, man. Kill you do it, man. Okay. Bloody hell. <laughs> so so um, people have been uh, shaken by the news of uh, uh, a lady called Sarah Everard who was um, attacked and I think she, she was murdered, right? Um, yeah. mm-hmm. By a police officer in broad daylight. Um, was, I think from what I know, she was kidnapped, she was thought kidnapped, raped, murdered, then she was chopped up, I believe. Oh. I don't know about chopped up. Her remains were found, but they didn't say in what state. But exactly, but... Isn't that, wouldn't that mean that she was chopped up? Like, because surely it would just mean that body, you know? Like if it was just... Yeah. I heard that. I, I didn't read that. She article. was like identified by her dental records as well. Um, yeah, so that, from what I, yeah. Um, I think a lot of people, uh, particularly obviously women, were shaken up because they were. Well, from what the discourse that I heard was, obviously, when it comes to sexual assault and being attacked in public, women are often told, you know, go out in public during the day, go on a busy street, don't wear bright clothes, all these sorts of like precautionary things to do. Um, I think you mean don't wear dark clothes. Sorry? You mean yeah, don't, don't wear dark clothes? I thought, yeah. Wouldn't I, they wear bright clothes to be seen? That's true, that's true. Sorry, sorry. Um, but obviously all these precautionary things, um, and she still was murdered, and she was, still was attacked, and she still was followed. And I think that's shaken up a lot of people, um, just because obviously the discourse is, oh, you should, if you want, don't, if you want to be safe, don't do all these things. And she did all the right things. And was still attacked, and I think yeah, she even she even texted her boyfriend. Uh, was like he sure before on the phone something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. So, with obviously, um, I did see a tweet saying like, obviously, I think this week has, has been International Women's Day, and we ended the week with Mother's Day, and it's been like a, a terrible week for women. Um, so obviously, just going off that, we're obviously all not women, um, and it wouldn't be right for us to only speak about this topic without bringing in someone who obviously can give us a women's perspective um so without further yeah because because the only the closest thing we get to a women's that like, perspective or voice is killed and chatting shit so are you trying to say that women chat shit <laughs> no i'm trying to say you chat AB. shit <laughs> you're a woman. That's, i don't know man you're you're thin ice there <laughs> we're, trying to we're trying to introduce our guests and you're saying things like that oh. Sorry, I apologize. Okay, Johnny, interesting. <clears throat> but yeah, without further ado, we have someone who's experienced something similar and has helped other people who have experienced something like that as well. Um, she goes by the name A. Oh, thank you. Um, if I can kind of just like jump in and say hi, I, I suppose thank you for having me and giving me this platform. Um, it's really, it's really interesting because I think, yeah, it's Sorry. exactly that, isn't it? We don't have. Sorry. <laughs> I know, I know why you're laughing. Yeah, <laughs> it, your face is just frozen. It, and you look so confused. I was trying to ignore it, but bro. I never finished the introduction. Bro, I, I thought everyone's, but bro, I, I couldn't hear nothing here, so I thought I bugged oh. first. I was like, cool, let me just... Like... I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. I might actually just change tabs, because if my, like if AB freezes again, I think that's going to throw me off. It's, it's um, just, it's, yeah, it's just AB. Like, yeah, no, I think it's super important that you guys actually want a woman's perspective and kind of a woman's voice. <clears throat> and I think what we'll be talking about a little bit later is what men can do. And just to start with, I think, you know, the act of giving women a platform when you've got one already is really, really fantastic and really helpful because that's not always the case. So I think elevating women, giving them that platform, letting them speak on issues which really, truly do resonate with them is so important. Um, so yeah, I think I think kind of to begin with, you know, AB reached out to me and said like it would be really great to hear 
well, great is one word, but I suppose like important to hear kind of a woman's story and my story specifically, which I've kind of come out with a few times somewhat publicly, but um, never on a platform like this where I can kind of just like freelance and talk. Um, so yeah, I think just kind of thinking about Sarah Everard and what happened to her, I mean, to say what happened to her is unfortunate is for sure an understatement. It's unfortunate and it's unjust. And, you know, it's kind of all the things Kilda was saying. I mean, this is a woman who had followed all of the, the unjust rules which were put upon us from a very young age. So like, wear brightly colored clothing, but don't wear clothing which is gonna attract anybody. Text your mate, be on the phone to someone, walk on the main roads. All of this to say, yes, I'm alive, I'm present, I'm here and I'm safe un up until this point to then be taken off the street by the very people who are supposed to protect you. Quick question, yeah? Yeah. I can you hear me, yeah? Yeah. So did your family like give like a talk of like, yeah, this is what you're supposed to do or whatever, like, like at an early age? 100%, 100%. At what age did that happen, if you don't mind me asking? So coming here, it was like very strict rules on like, okay, so this is the culture here and people do go out and people do like, obviously have the freedom to do that what are you going to do to protect yourself? Well, um, probably not go out during, during like that, that, that's an absolute no. Like after like 6 p.m. or whatever, or sundown, or like in Islamic culture, like after Maghrib, you just don't go out, that's it. Um, especially as a woman, like you stay indoors. And if you do go out, like there's all these different things um, of like, you've got you've to text somebody when you leave, when you come back, make sure you're on the phone, don't have your headphones in. Um, this is what you should be wearing, like look behind you at all times. If you do feel like someone's coming close to you, quickly cross the road. And all these like, okay, if somebody does come up to you, you can knock on the house um, closest, all this kind of stuff. So it started very, very young. Um, do, you have, um, do you have any brothers? I've got an older brother, yeah. Did he get a talk about like how he should behave around women or was it just like, is no. you expect him to be um, like a certain way? Just expected to be a certain way. I think so. One of the things which is really, really important in my story is the relationship I had with my brother growing up and how that played into the kind of <clears throat> violence I experienced throughout my life. So, like, you know, I was the person who was told, like, I can't go out with my friends and I can't go out at night and I can't do all of these things, whilst mm -hmm. my brother could do whatever he wanted. And on top of that, my brother could literally tell me to do whatever. Like, if I did not cook for him or to be honest, even if I like one of the things I wasn't allowed to do was like look him in the eye. And if I did, like yeah. I got smacked across the face. Yeah. So I guess it's like growing up with that lens of this is kind of who I am. And to be honest, guys, like I'm not just saying this, but there were times where it got so much. I just spent a really like a long time in my childhood and teen years kind of just like locked in my room crying because I just didn't want to be a girl. Um because like you're you're trained to be honest from day one it's like a mix of like the western influence with the south asian influence you know and a muslim background of like you're trained from day one of like these are the things you should do out in the western world to like preserve yourself and these are the things you should be doing right now to make sure like you're ready at like the age of 21 or whatever to like get a man get married all of these things and a part of that training is like how you obey your brother and your dad um so i think like it was just a really confusing time um, and it was really, really painful, of course, um, you know, and I think that's a really important part of the story because I think the message that I'm trying to send right now is what happened to Sarah has resonated so deeply with so many women because there's this just huge spectrum of things which happen in a woman's life which affect her um, in the kind of like power dynamics with men. So it can be like all these little things, like when you go out and you have to hold on to your keys and you've got to do all of these things, or it's like the way you interact with your dad, it's the way you interact with your brother, it's how you're treated when you go to school and then you get a job and then your boss is like really shit to you or you're sexually harassed. And it's such a culmination of like a lifetime of oppression, of pain, of anger, of frustration that just comes down to like seeing something like this on the news and going, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. I feel it. And you know, a woman like Sarah walking down the street, she's probably had to do things all her life to feel safe. And she thought she was doing 
what was best and what she was told. And probably guidance, which the police probably set out too. And it just mm. didn't work. And I think it shook so many women to the core of like that feeling of not feeling safe. And for someone like me, I would actually say like, so I'm, I'm 23 now and I'm getting to the point where I'm like finally like feeling really comfortable and safe. Like it's taken me a really long time to be able to sleep at night, to be able to like hear someone even raise their voice a little bit and not feel triggered or afraid by it to like walk home at night um, even with friends and not feel extremely paranoid like there were some times where I'd like just run I'd literally just run um, just from fear and I can kind of talk a little bit more about like the different interactions I've had like because I think it like escalates and like actually um, maybe like you started talking about like my family the dynamic there yeah absolutely and I think because it was the norm for me I never really questioned it and it was so like deeply and rooted and then I got older and then that kind of stuff started happening. You know what you hear about, like all the catcalling guys, like grabbing you on the street. Um, I actually remember, so we all went to the, uh, we, I think we all went to the same school, right? And mm -hmm. we had a park near the school. Man, like anytime you stood around that park, near that park, you know, getting the bus home, like off, off the high road. I, I remember so many times, like, and my, like my friends, we have got mutual friends, will kind of tell you about this as well. Like you'd stand there at the bus stop some guy, like some literally some old man will pull up, open his car door and tell you to get in and then like hurl like swear words at you if you didn't and like really threaten you. Um, that happened quite a few times, things like that. And then that was school. Um, and even at school, you know, like I'm not going to go too much into detail about this. But yeah, teachers were predatory, really predatory really sexual uh, like you know their behavior was really sexual and inappropriate mm. um so it's like okay another thing on the list when you get to uni um and for me that was my first time like living out and having a bit of that independence that I'd never had before and I was really excited about it um and that's kind of when it really got bad um I was like yeah I'm gonna walk I'm gonna walk around at night I've obviously I'm gonna go to Sainsbury's when I want to go to Sainsbury's huh like, that was like my freedom and I, I remember there was this one time like yeah this this guy was just like filming me walking down the street um and like I didn't know what to do because he was like literally outside my flat so I just like kept walking around in circles around and around the main road until he kind of just left but he was filming me and it was just moments like that when your heartbeat just raises and you're like what the fuck is this guy gonna do like what's gonna happen um, and there's countless moments like that. I had moments like coming back from work about a year ago and this guy exposed himself to me and was masturbating on the street. And you feel like shit in moments like that. Like, it's honestly unbelievable, but yeah, yeah, like, like people do that. Yeah. Uh, Someone done that uh, Crickwood yesterday, actually. No, yesterday, a couple of days ago. Sorry. As in you, you <gasps> yeah. saw that? I didn't see it, but I was obviously... Like I know a lot of people in it in cricket. Oh, right. whatever, and they're like, yeah. yeah, man. Some so it's so, a so customer went in. So, uh, it was a mom and a daughter. They were walking, and then first, um, the guy he must have broke the the door, and then after I think I think it was the same don. Like I think obviously they must have cut in it, and I think the same don just pulled down his trousers and started like, I, I I don't know the better way to put it, but we start start the helicopter. <laughs> And then, um, and yeah, he got, he got, he got, he got arrested. He got arrested. But yeah, I like, I, I would have never, like, I would know, I would, know, I would like, it wouldn't be like at the, like at the forefront of my head that you know what I'm saying, like, oh yeah, there's people out there who do yeah, these yeah. things. Like, you get me? But, but yeah, sorry, you go ahead. No, no, of course. Like, this is like obviously very transgressive behavior and not normal behavior at all. Mm -hmm. Um. So this is a thing like you get you almost get like two ends of the story because you get these people like in the dark in the shadows these like creepy strangers obviously predators really dangerous that you should be afraid of right that's like the the story that's painted from a really young age like stay away from the strangers like don't talk to strangers that kind of thing and then unfortunately the painful truth is um i don't know the exact stat. i should have it done i'm really happy to kind of quickly look it up or whatever but like most rapes are done by people you know friends yeah. or mutual or whatever and that was I think the hardest part for me to accept um because I was doing all these things like yeah I'm going to be super safe I'm going to like come home at a certain time even though I'm living out I'm like going to tell my friends where I'm going and 
all of these things. And you think you know people. Yeah, and unfortunately, like my time at uni and so on meant there were moments where obviously I was, you know, as everyone would be like alone with people in a flat or in a room or whatever. Um, there were two instances. So one where I was sexually assaulted quite badly. I got out. I was really numb. Um, and I'm happy to kind of talk more about that journey because I remember it was such a landmark moment for me. And like, I then like worked with a lot of women. We set up an organization. We came up with all these like tactics and these like support mechanisms to help other women. And we did a lot of work. And not even a year later, I, um, I, was, I was raped by a friend. Um, and that's, I think, and that's an important part is it kind of follows on from what I was saying before. I mean, you could, yeah, it's just, it's not this, this one event that happens in your life. It's so many different kind of like micro um, actions and aggressions constantly building up. Sorry, yeah, you were going to ask a question. So, okay, well, I've got another question, but I was, I was going to first, I was going to ask initially, was that what, like, what did you do, like, what steps did you take to sort of, like, overcome, like, uh, what you've been through? But I was going to get to that in later, innit? So, yeah. the, what I was going to ask now is, um, has, or, like, how has, or if it has, affected, like, what, yeah, like, the situation that you've been through, how has it affected your relationship with other people, whether it be man or woman? Um, yeah, okay, I can kind of take both of those. So, because they kind of like almost marry up to each other quite well, don't they? Um, yeah. So I think the way I cooked, um, to be honest, like I didn't accept it at first with both those occasions. I was really numb. Like the initial response was complete numbness. Um, and I was thinking about this a lot today, exactly how I felt in those kind of initial weeks and months. And I don't think I've ever actually felt that empty. Um, so it was really hard to kind of, cause you don't, you don't even accept it in your head that it happened. Cause you don't want so to. So what do you mean by feeling empty? It's just like complete like rejection. You um, disassociate from the event completely. It's just like your brain's way of coping with it. Like, oh, okay, I'm just going to completely shut it away. And that's what I did initially. Like, I'm not going to even think about it until obviously, like, I had so much anxiety and depression kind of pounding up inside of me. Um, I went back to some old habits of coping with stress and anxiety and feeling really low that I, when I, like, you know, when I was going through what I was going through, I talked about earlier with my family, which was like self harm. Um, but I didn't think about, I still kind of like, I don't want to think about it. I just want to like move on with my life. I just want to move on with my life. I want to be positive. And I went and got a haircut one day. And as soon as I stood up, I just completely blacked out and fainted. Um, and that was the moment, like they called my parents. They were like, yeah, come get your daughter. And my, that was a moment where like my friends were like, okay, something's up. Like what's happening? Something's obviously wrong. Um, you know, how long after uh, the incident did that happen, the uh, black and out? So this this was in regards to the sexual assault. And I would say it was like, I would probably say actually probably a month. Okay. Um, so and like, what, yeah. Happened? No, no, um, please go. No, I was um, going to say, so what happened after the blacking out? Yeah. Um, after the blacking out, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm obviously fucking torn up. This is hurting me so much. I want to speak to the guy and I want him to know what he did in a really like, look, we need to talk. Like maybe we got our wires crossed. Like maybe you've misunderstood and you didn't realize that I didn't want that. Like what's happened, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I went full into the, I need to fix this guy and I need to educate him and I need to help him. So, quick so this was someone you yeah. were close to before? I mean, I would say he was like a mutual friend. All right. Okay. That was it. Like I'd met him a few times. That was it. Like yeah. maybe twice, I think. Um, and I mean, you know, like that night, he like the night itself was just complete con. Like he's like, yeah, let's go have drinks with our friends and let's go meet up with everyone. 
turns out it's only him. Oh, don't worry, everybody's yeah. back at my flat. Oh, turns out no one's back at your flat. What's happening here? This is really weird. All this kind mm. of stuff. Um, so it was like a really messed up situation. But anyway, like I asked to speak to him and he, I don't know why, I guess I was just so optimistic that he would understand and be like, oh my God, yeah, fuck, I fucked up, I'm so sorry, or just something. And I actually thought like we could just kind of help each other understand. His reaction was so like, I'm not like that, you know, like, no, of course not. I would never do something like that. I'm not like that. Like, you know, I'm not like this fucking predator or whatever he thought I was trying to paint him as when I wasn't. I, my, my conversations very much like the actions that you sometimes take, like whether consciously or not consciously, they can be extremely hurtful and can ruin people's lives. Um, every time we had one of these chats, he'd kind of like give him, give really shit excuses. I, I remember one of the excuses was like, you know, I, I went, it was I, in high school like I was the nerdy guy like no girls wanted to talk to me and then suddenly I've got this girl who's really nice to me and she's in my flat and she's so pretty you know I would never get a girl like that in real life so I just took my chance mm. um you, like, which again is it? did you report it like? so I after like literally months of trying to convince this guy to like understand my position and talk to me and even getting some of his friends to speak to him and like do all of this stuff, mm -hmm. nothing happened. And the last time I saw him, I remember it was at like a Christmas party where he made fun of me and like he, like I had a, I had a dress which had like a V-neck and like a zip. Mm. And in front of everyone, he said, you better zip that up before things get dangerous again. Um. um and I just told him to leave because I had had enough I had like done everything that I thought in my mind like the nice thing like oh let me help him let me like no like you know what if anything that hurt me more because it wasn't my responsibility to teach him better he should have known it anyway so he he made um, this comment even after you yeah, made it clear even how you after felt. even after okay even after I had literally said, you have sexually assaulted me. Yeah. Um, but what he didn't get it. You, what, what made you want to like make that step of like trying to educate him rather than like reporting it at first? I'm not saying, so, I'm not saying that you're, you're yeah, wrong yeah. for doing it. But no, I'm no, 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 just... of course not. You yeah. know what? I, I thought about this a lot. And at the time I was like, this is the right thing to do because if I can like even teach one guy how to be better like it won't happen to another woman it won't like all of these things also I think that was my default because I spent so much of my childhood like looking after my brother and like trying to help him because my mum would always say like he's your responsibility if he does anything bad like you should be the one to like hold him together and all of these things I'd always felt like I had to like heal men like this is a big thing that women feel they have to like heal men and help them through all of this and you know like hold their burdens and all these kinds of things when actually it's so damaging. Um, but another part was I, I did go to my head of department at the time and I spoke to her and I said, this is what's happened. And she said, are you okay? And I said, I'm getting there. Like I'm, I'm, you know, taking proactive steps. I'm talking to the right people. I've got support things now. Like now that I've like, now, now that I can see it in black and white, that's what happened. Like, it's not just this thing living in my head. Like I do feel better about it. She said, okay, because I'm going to be honest. I've seen this happen to many women, you know, young women at university and going through the whole process, it will do you more damage than it will him because you'll go through like a fucking trial. You'll do all of these things. You'll have to get the process together. You'll have to like do all this evidence and it's your third year of university. You've got your exams. I think I had my exams in like three months and I just thought, you know what, you're right. Fuck it. Like, oh, wait, so she, she was like um, telling you not to pursue she anything. was basically saying like if you want to pursue it pursue it but know that it will do you serious damage too oh right okay um, um and it is true like like our our legal system is made up of like things which basically yeah really really harm the victim mm -hmm. um but instead like we did all i i you know i so what i did instead was like okay i still need some sort of like i guess justice i don't know what just being able to talk about it, being able to help other women with it. That was always my goal. So we set up this like 
organization, me and this other girl. And we ended up photographing so many women and helping them tell their stories, including me and including her, about what had happened. Like without having, like it was never about naming and shaming. Like we never did that. It was yeah. just letting women have their say um, and opening up that conversation. And that was important because I think that's that's actually what was always my intention was like, let's at least just open up the conversation, whether it's talking to the guys about it or talking to the women, like, or getting them to talk to each other. Because I always do believe like, yeah, if we educate, if we have the right conversations, surely people will learn. But, you know, um, and I felt really good. I felt really like, okay, I'm getting through this. I'm getting through this. And I think because of that, because I said, right, I've gone down exploring the legal thing. Oh my God, I'm working with like all these different organizations like Rape Crisis. I'm giving International Women's Day speeches. I'm helping women come out about their experiences. Like, yeah, this is my like high point. You know, I've got my shit together. I know what to do now. If I'm ever alone with a guy again, this is not going to happen because I fucking know my boundaries, right? Mm. No. No, because it was never about me having to teach myself better or to make myself better, right? Like I was already fine. It was what was external. And a year on, a mentor that I had had for so many years who was much older, I think the age gap was 25 years, raped me. So yeah, and that power dynamic in of itself is so messed up when you know, someone you are, he, he had a duty of care towards me, um, all of this sorts of stuff. And that was a really difficult, difficult situation um, and far more, far more violent and aggressive than the former and much worse. And I remember, I remember I actually like my brain did the exact same thing to be honest, which was put it away. Don't even think about it. And I did, I did for about two years. When, when was this? Like this after... was when I was like, when, sorry, after what? Fred? So uh, you said it was a year after the first incident. It was roughly. So like my first, in the first incident was like, third year of university and this was like right at the end like if not after uni had just finished okay okay um it was a week before my first like day at my first like my job mm -hmm. i remember that um so i was carrying this burden around with me in my head but like not acknowledging it and when i joined work literally maybe a week or two later My manager came on to me and I got a lot of inappropriate comments. And that's when I dipped really badly. And I didn't quite like say, oh, I'm feeling like it's shit enough for your manager to do that and for people at work to do that without you already having this history. Mm. Um, yeah, so it took me, I would say about two years and I finally, finally came to a point of saying, yeah, that happened to me when, um, when I was in therapy, actually, for just literally working through issues with family, men, all of these things. And it was like, actually, like six months into therapy, I finally spoke about it, six months in. Um, and that's, yeah, it was really difficult, actually, when I first started like realizing what had happened and that actually this journey I'd been on wasn't this like linear oh it's just upwards 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 no it's like going around in circles it's going up down everywhere I got really paranoid like sometimes I was living in a flat where they had a little keyhole you know like when you look through like someone knocks and you look and you're like oh right it's them sometimes I would look through that keyhole and just see him and obviously he's not there but I would see him and I'd freak out and I'd have a panic attack um I started having horrible dreams. I just, yeah, it wasn't great at all. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually pause so you can ask any questions. Or I feel like I've been talking no, no, for no, a no, while. No, 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 go on, go on, go on, that's fine. Unless you yeah, want to pause. Yeah, and I think that I think it's just like trying to tell a story of like a whole host of events 
because I'll be honest, like, yeah, like I'm gonna, like, it does sound like, fuck, like she's had like so many different things. What the hell has she been doing wrong? You know, man, I tell you when I, like, I did everything right. Like my upbringing was so conservative, like, you know, the, the way you dress, the way you talk to men, the way you did all of this, you followed every rule in the book. And yet this happened. And I think when I started talking about it, I realized actually I don't have this like extraordinary tale of unfortunate events or whatever. So many of the women I know have this as well. Like so many, um, and I can't stress that enough. I think, I think yeah. we need to start mo shifting the narrative of what like women can do. Yeah, absolutely. Because you you just like you just went on to say that oh yeah like it's not like I've done everything I could or whatever. Do you get me? And even with the Sarah yeah. E um, situation, there's a heavy there's a sort of like there's a uh, like there's like a heavy like focal focus point on what she's done to prevent it, whereas we shouldn't be talking about it anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, am I, am I making sense? Like, you, like a, no, no, like, no, exactly. Like a girl, like a girl have to go through these, that like, shouldn't have to go through these, like, yeah. precautions or whatever. Or like, even have to say that, like, yeah, she's done this. So, do you know what I'm saying? To say, oh, can't, so it can't be her fault. Do you, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? No, no, completely. Because like, to be honest, even if she had not walked on the main road, wore dark clothing, not called her friend, like, that doesn't mean that should have happened. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so how, how long how yeah. long were you therapy for? How long was I sorry? In therapy for? Um, I started therapy when probably like maybe a year and a half ago, and I'm still in it. <laughs> do you um, do you feel like do you feel like it's helping? For sure. I think like um, what's really interesting is that my therapist is a man, and he's much older than me. And I always like, we always talk about whether like, that would have been a deterrent to the progress I'm making, but it's actually really, really helpful. Um, because, you know, I think it's, it's just really interesting to get his perspective on things. And it's sometimes you do realize like, wow, it's, no, it's just no different. You know, he also thinks this is wrong and this is fucked up. And he kind of gives you insights into like power dynamics and all these sorts of things. So it's helpful. And I would really, I mean, this is a thing, right? Like, when kind of when women used to approach me like this has happened to me too what do I do and like we talk to the end of the earth about it um and you could kind of refer them to different organizations and there's such great ones out there something like therapy like one-to-one -one, is such a privilege I was only able to do it when I started earning money for myself um and even then it's like very expensive right it's like private therapy and it's it's such a but there's definitely so many organizations out there like charity ones, which I can definitely refer people to that like, do a lot of pro bono work, that do a lot of this kind of stuff. The act of like just being able to tell your story is so validating because look, like the stats show that women don't win these cases very often. They don't yeah. like get to talk about this stuff. So like even being able to say, look, this happened to me. Oh my God, it happened to me too. And all this kind of stuff, like it's so validating in of, it, it, in of itself is like a form of therapy. Yeah. yeah um going off uh that about uh the commission thing um I, there's actually a stat yeah so the five uh 5.7 percent of reported rape cases are um actually convicted 5.7 yeah. that's insane yeah man that was a study that was done in 2005 yeah um but yeah so I just want to ask a question. Yeah, no, no. It's it's interesting because I think like the journey I think I've had since, because this is like your other question is like, how did it impact my relationships and relationships with men? I think it's been a one hell of a sea storm of a journey, to be honest, because like if you go from the dynamic I had with my family to then educating this guy constantly and not getting him to agree or him to understand and all this sorts of stuff. I think it like basically set the bar extremely low for me, like personally as a person. So I could like, you know, you could do something really horrific and I'd probably think, well, this is what people do. Um, and I, I was really like cynical and paranoid and afraid, afraid a lot of the time. Um, 
I remember like it was just like this house like like almost like a dinner party or whatever where people left and then there was this one guy cleaning up and me he was really nice like but I I felt so afraid because I'd been in those situations before when they had been manipulated and abused to such an extent and I had a panic attack <laughs> it's just it's that like how how you interact with men because of how men have treated you but also how you then view yourself I did for a very long time just see myself as this like object and I had a lot of internalized like misogyny because of it like oh like fuck I shouldn't wear these clothes and I shouldn't do this kind of stuff and oh my god like you know I, I remember like I think it took me probably a year and a half until I could wear a dress again um and even then like looking in the mirror was really difficult like really difficult like while you're wearing a dress or just in general just general because I know the stigma that it would carry um I had a lot of people after these incidents give me some really to be honest some really extremely problematic and terrible advice I had um girls like really good friends tell me like oh you know you you do have more of like a sexualized image like the lips and the dark hair and the lashes and you're slim and you're tall and you're curvy and like all these things like that was in response to me telling them this person has literally sexually assaulted me that was that the, the first response yeah that was the first um like talking it through like no not, not obviously like the initial like oh I'm, like obviously the initial is like oh my god I'm so sorry like I don't and then like talking about it like I don't know if I'd ever be able to relate just because like guys don't see me like that and like you'll probably have to go through it a lot in life why is that the conversation we're having you know what I mean it's crazy that the yeah. the mind goes straight to 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 the to the woman involved and not, not the action of the man yeah. like always yeah like and I think what was disheartening about that is like that was coming from a like really liberal feminist white woman who should have like honestly in my head like I was expecting her to like give me the holy grail of this kind of advice you know um but she said things like probably my mom would have said like <laughs> to shame the victim you know I come from a very like conservative Pakistani Muslim culture like so when I told my like white friend blonde friend that it was like she, if she's going to say this, how will I ever be able to talk to my mom about it or anyone from like my background? Yeah. Did you? Did you end up telling your parents? I, so finally, like last November, I did tell my mom and we were talking and talking and I just couldn't almost hold it in anymore. Like I'd gotten to the point, like, you know, what? I've accepted that this has happened to me and I want my mom to also just know because we'd been talking for the past year about the behavior of my dad and my brother and how that had impacted me. And I think she should know the other instances. So I just said it. <laughs> and I, I chose for some bloody reason, I chose to say it in like the middle of a restaurant because we sat there eating fish. I just said it because I was like, you know what, actually in a way it kind of helps because it's like a controlled environment. Like it helps mm. me feel a bit calm and like in control about it. I, I think like, yeah, her initial was just complete disbelief. And what was um, like, what was the follow-up station like? It was like, I think she was like completely incoherent trying to make sense of it. So like her f- first questions were like, how, what happened? See, like you shouldn't have moved out. Because mm. like, you know, like, you know, in, in, in Urdu, she was telling me like how the devil gets you when a woman's alone and all this kind of stuff. And she's like, that's, that was the devil getting you. I was like, oh, fuck's sake, like, that's the last thing I want to hear. <laughs> that's the last thing. <laughs> and I, I just, like, I'd already prepared myself. Like, she's going to say a lot of stuff, which is going to be hurtful and quite damaging. And that's mm. almost not her fault, because that's just the culture we've grown up in. That's If it tried to condition me, like, up until the age I was 20, I can't imagine how deeply conditioned she is in her 50s, you know? She's very much a victim in this scenario as well, because she's only been told one thing. She's not had the same exposure I had. So she was saying all these things. And then she kept asking me, like, how? Like, I want you to tell me exactly step by step. And I said, Mum, like, there's no point in me going through it step by step because it happened, you know? It's, you're not going to come in at some point in the story and be like, see, you shouldn't have done that. See, mm-hmm. that's where it, like, 
it happened. Um, and she was obviously extremely, extremely hurt. And she took a little bit of time and she came and then to my room that night because we didn't talk about it on the way home. And she just said, like, who else have you told? I mean, I had told quite a few people at that point because I had accepted it, you know, like at least I can tell my friends and talk about it with them. I said, no, not many people, not no one really, because I knew she, that would really upset her, knowing that other people knew. And it was it was because she, the next thing she said to me was, good, don't tell anyone. Mm. And and I was like, well, why? She goes, like, people talk. You know people talk. And if you want to get married tomorrow, like, you don't want your husband to know, do you? Like, why would he, like, he wouldn't want you otherwise. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> right? And she said, yeah, like, look, she said, like, men will never be able to accept that. No man will be able to accept that another man's touched you like that. So whether it was forceful or not, so don't don't tell anyone, um, please. Uh, and actually that, that tormented her for weeks because she would literally come up to me several times in a day for weeks on, just be like, you haven't told anyone, right? And it was hurtful, actually, because I wish, just wish, like, even half those times she was just like are you okay mm. but no it was like have you said have you saved my like reputation <laughs> constantly and that was really hurtful but i had like prepared myself for it um and a big part of me telling my mom was because i just i again i just wanted her to know that even despite the fact that she had raised me with these strict rules and prepared me for like worst case scenario and done everything she possibly could have still happened. It was never on me. It wasn't on her. Yeah. I feel like that's what um, the narrative should focus more towards is what um, like, it should focus more on men more than anything. Like, regardless of what the woman was wearing, regardless of what time it was, um, like what path home she took. Um, that's that's actually one of the main reasons why I thought a female voice would be good on like talking about this, this topic because like us, obviously like us three, we, can, we, we would all agree on saying the same thing about we won't know the complexities of just like because the initial, obviously, the initial thing was for me. I approached you initially just to like to if there's anything that you want me to talk about, whatever. But yeah, after talking to you, <clears throat> I realized that I can't do any justice by just talking about these examples or how people feel, etc. How women feel, where yeah. like, like if if I was, I'm hoping that if when if people see like, oh, like. Like both men and women are like talking about the things and like we are calling people out on this and we're this is talking about like uh like experiences that like that a lot of other women experience at the same time as well. Not at the same, but they experience at, at some point in their life. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So it would encourage like more men to call people out, like their brethren or whatever, or if they see someone hundred percent. Like it could be something small, like, just like oh, like a man sitting next to a woman, like on a train, and like they're trying to, he's trying to talk to her, whatever, and she's moving that uncomfortable. Like it would only take like guy just to be like, yo, what the fuck are you doing, or yo, like is there a problem? Yeah. For the and the guy could just fuck off because, do you know what I'm saying? Completely. So yeah, I feel there's like a little mid sort of takeaway for. Uh, we'll get into that more specific um ways of like how men men can like, help handle the, these these type of situations um but yeah is i don't, I don't really know how to like how to no, like, no, gauge no. food so they'll be like i'm sorry for like any awkward silences or that you get me yeah. but, no no uh, we're all we're all reflecting yeah man, um, but yeah and i think that's the thing like you're you're so right because i because it like you had me as a woman trying to call out this guy and call out these guys and even in the most constructive and friendly and almost like too helpful way and it didn't work um and I think about even like my brother you know like any I remember points where I called him out 
man, it did not work. If anything, it was like, what the hell are you accusing me of? Mm. Um, and sometimes I would just like literally go like, sometimes I, I just would wonder like, maybe all it would have taken was like my dad to just like sit down with him and be like, what the fuck are you doing? You know? Um, but he never did. And I would always like, crave that. Um, so it's those kind of like really proactive things. Like, cause it's, it's one thing, like, cause I think for such a long time, we've, you know, when you, when you have this conversation with guys, like, oh my God, this guy did this to me, or this guy talked down to me, or he was really horrible. Like almost like the initial reaction is always like, oh, but I'm not like that. But no one was talking about you, like, yeah, yeah. you know? And that's where that, that whole like not all men thing comes from. Cause it's like a defense, defensive response, isn't it? Like, oh my shit, I'm not like that, right? You're, you feel fine with me, right? Which is yeah. like the, the intention is at times like good because it's like you're making sure that you're not like that. You're reflecting. You're like, okay, shit, like she doesn't think of me like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but what would yeah. you do if that girl then turned around and was like, no, nah, actually, man, like there are a few times where you have been a bit shit as well. Would you yeah. be like, oh shit, tell me? Like, I hold my hands up, like please tell me. Or is it like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know how yeah. how receptive are we to these things? Yeah. Um, like really recently I was talking about this to a, like a senior at work, like a colleague who's like, you know, the guy who thinks he knows everything about this topic. Um, and I was saying how a lot of, a lot of the men at work, which is true, like a lot of the men at work, cause I'm the youngest in my organization um, and I'm a girl and I'm like from a Pakistani background, all this kind of stuff. And I work in a really like old institution. I work for the government, you know, um, a lot of the guys just, I don't know what happens there, all their professionalism, their respect, everything just goes out the window when they speak to me. Um, a lot of a lot of the colleagues that I have, and it's really like confusing. And obviously you know why, because they don't view me as their equal in the workplace and all this sorts of stuff. So I was talking to that, um, him about that. And he said, well, I'm not like that immediately. And instead of like, this time I didn't even say like, well, I'm not even chatting about you. Like clearly not, you know, I'm talking about other people. And I just said, how do you know you're not like that? Um, the irony being like obviously that he was a bit like that actually <laughs> um, so I asked him like, how do you know and he said because I have my shit together and he walked away from me that was it that was a conversation what does that even mean it was like he was insulted isn't mean? it yeah he was insulted like, but I wasn't yeah. even talking about him like <laughs> but that's where that defensiveness comes from and um, it's really interesting because so much of what's been happening on social media and if you I think um, AB, you've seen a like, I, well, I've been spamming you with it. Like, this is what men can do. Um, like on Instagram and stuff, like it's really interesting because one of them is like talking about how guys handle rejection and how this yeah. is like really rooted in that. Because a lot of the time we get afraid to reject guys or like to be like, you know, in the middle of the street, like, excuse me, why the hell are you following me? Can you get away from me, please? Because we're afraid of the retaliation. And even on like a friendship level, like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So that those kind of conversations are really interesting. Like, how defensive should we be um, instead of just like, you know what, I'm going to listen for a sec. Um, it's like a it's it's a lose lose, isn't it? Because the, the conversation is, oh, we expect women to act a certain way, but if they ignore it, they they're open to the danger. And if they if they uh, speak up and confront a potential attacker, they yeah. they're open to attack. So it's like it, you're obviously directing the uh, the advice at the wrong party. Would you mm. think? Would you think uh, we should encourage women to uh, learn a combat sport? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's funny. So when, when I did that organization, one of the things that we were thinking about was like putting up like self-defense classes for women and like helping them do that. So, and this goes like through the whole thing of like carrying things in your bag, which are like, you know, obviously pepper spray and stuff is illegal in the UK, but some women do choose to carry like deodorant or hairspray just to be safe mm. and do all these different things like self-defense kind of mechanisms. I think it's a nice to have as a this is what we should do in the meantime until it gets better yeah because but it's not going to solve like the root cause yeah no yeah. definitely mm. but I, I only i only asked that i'm not saying that the women like again like the women should be taking like these precautions or whatever i'm only saying that yeah it's because i feel like i can encourage like uh, like to so say like a girl's listening to this i feel like i can encourage a, a girl to pick up a combat sport then mm. like much quicker than I could so I could help solve like this like this issue the, the actual deep the actual yeah yeah, yeah. Issue, you know what I'm saying I think like A said it's a it's a temporary fix knowing how the world is um I think it's it's a temporary fix and then obviously at the same time we need to sort out the cause 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. this is like, if we're going to talk about like, obviously, this is like all to do with the dynamics between men and women, and that's not exactly something we can solve overnight. Mm. Um, yeah, but there's there's yeah, kind of like thinking about the things, because like I feel like for so long, yeah, guys, like a, a lot of guys have thought like they they're part of the they're not part of the problem because they're not they're not murderers or they're not rapists or they're not creeps or they're not predators right no but oh, that's boy. that's not part of the solution you know it's not enough. either yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't you just accept you... yourself and say well i can yeah walk away yeah sorry sorry i was gonna say you know you uh, ab you mentioned should women do combat sport i think men should do combat sport because being in the right um school in terms of combat sport you know it humbles a lot of men um it teaches yeah. them discipline it teaches them how to interact yeah. with other people in tense situations so i think yeah. i think it's useful for men to do combat sport as well yeah. um definitely yeah but it's interesting isn't it because like because there's things like that and there's things like what can you do on like an everyday such simple level as a guy to help this cause and there are things it's like things that you said like yeah you can intervene you can call shit out um and I think to be honest like even for me like I would say in the past year I've changed a lot of the mindset I had um about women like even being a woman like because I obviously grew up in such like a horribly misogynistic environment obviously I'm going to like internalize a lot of that so like any time now that I'm like you know even even thinking like geez like why is she like wearing that or oh she's a bit too like spoke like she speaks out a bit too much she's quite bossy or anything like that like that I would probably like think before even in passing with friends and stuff like when you know when you bitch about people that that you got to cut that because mm. that's you're playing into the narrative you're playing into the narrative that there's like you know you know there's all these like stereotypes about women like they're bossy and they're like you know slutty and they're all these kinds of things and it's like things you don't even think about but you just pick up on over time and those like attitudes that's where it starts breeding um and obviously in some cases it escalates into violence it escalates into all these things obviously in my case it wouldn't but it's like those like really micro level things um and i've been thinking a lot about it at work so this is like the most like minor thing and i don't even know if you guys would even think it's like a thing but I don't know, like I, I, I had a lot of imposter syndrome when I joined my job because it's like this big government job, like what's, mad amount of old white guys. You know, impossible, like, impossible. Imposter syndrome. What's, what's imposter syndrome? Uh, imposter syndrome is like, you know, like you're, you think it happens a lot with like work. Most people use it in work situations. You think like, I don't deserve to be here. I'm an imposter and you have such low confidence. Mm. Um, you doubt like whether you're, what you're even doing is good. Like, is it just good or is it, I mean, am I here because I've, it's a fluke like what is it um and because of that like you overcompensate so much so I remember like the emails I send out like sometimes I think what the hell am I doing like oh, I hope you had a nice weekend oh so great like your meeting today then like beg them to do this like one really simple thing I hope that's okay let me know if not happy to be flexible many thanks a like <laughs> this like essay of like begging pleading like look how nice I am and then like the guy will reply like okay thanks like, or whatever his name okay you better go now <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's just like wait so i was like i was thinking about this a lot and like i read this article which was like why are you doing that to yourself like why are you like so submissive and like so i, I started like the, i did this experiment with a few other friends at work where we like just sent normal emails like hi could i please have this by 5 p.m let me know if this work thanks mate the amount of complaints I got really? was mad. It's like, why, why is she being so aggressive? Like, why is she being so rude? <laughs> like, I actually <laughs> copy and pasted one of the emails I, this guy sent me, sent it back to him and I had to ask him for something and just like, obviously change the things. And he complained. <laughs> so then I started thinking like, shit, there's so many things here that we don't even think about, like in terms of like the dynamics and the power dynamics and how we're treating each other, you know? Why is that? It's because we've been taught like these shitty narratives for so long. Um, and it, it plays into what we were talking about before. I know it's like a stretch, but it plays into what we were talking about before about it's the wrong narrative. Um, and actually we should be thinking about like what guys can do. So 
it will take a lot of like self-reflection it will take a lot of things about like how even in your relationships how are you treating the women when they talk about like you know I'm not really happy with this behavior or when girls reject you or when you know you see something out in public and like the guy's like obviously being way too creepy with the girl and intimidating like how do you intervene do you intervene how do you make sure actually we get to a place where we're not saying oh let's create safe spaces for women and instead we say everywhere is a safe space for a woman mm. you know yeah. 100 I agree uh, but I feel like to get to that like I feel like uh like a strong and consistent discourse should be created first because mm. just like with everything like yeah cool like Sarah E passed away this week but something yeah. might happen next week and then everything like everything what everyone spoke about is what whole week was you thrown out the window do you know what I'm saying because there's yeah. something new to do like, absolutely and it'll be something so like so like out of the water like fucking fuck like like a new Netflix series or do you know what I'm saying or someone yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Everybody bought a new car or Tesla stock has plummeted or you know what I'm saying so social media trends like that's yeah, how it works yeah, I feel like, do you know what's interesting like yeah I, I was uh, thinking about this a bit today like and it will probably actually link to even like this whole like Meghan Markle situation and say what happened at the vigil last night in Clapham Common right police brutality it was horrific like the very police that they're protesting against exerted that kind of violence. Now, the reaction of that is obviously like horrific mass media saying like this is unjust, this is awful. Um, like, yes, we're in a pandemic, but protests of this nature should be allowed. Police brutality should absolutely not be the case. Is that the same reaction that the media had last summer during Black Lives Matter protests? Do you know? And it's like, we've also got to think about like the kind of audience this is reaching out to because this is, this is such an important cause and I'm all for it. And it has reached out to kind of the white middle-class women and men who did not come out last summer. Yet, this is a very similar kind of power dynamic here. You know, think about the hierarchies in society Women, yeah, are at the bottom. Black people are at the bottom. Like, you know, we need to also tailor the way we think about these issues as not being separate to one another, but very much part of the same cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's not stop talking about this. Let's not stop talking about Black Lives Matter. Let's treat this as like one issue going forwards as well. Like, because if anything, you know, yeah, Sarah, Sarah, let's, let's be honest, Sarah Everard is from, you know, they, it works for the media, doesn't it? To say like, a very beautiful white woman, middle class, was taken from her home and abducted. Yet we spent like how long talking about Brianna Taylor in America, who was like killed and no one cares. You well, know, even that. That's what I'm saying. Even that. Yeah. Like, who's yeah. talking about it now? Exactly. Who's talking about it now? Yeah. Like we can't forget about these things, and it's they they're equally as important. They're they're hugely horrific. But like social media is great because it means people are talking about it. But it also means that, like you said, God knows what they'll be talking about tomorrow. Yeah. I was, yeah. was going to say as well, yeah, just like going off that, I feel like when these things come up on like social media or like the media and stuff, yeah, I think a lot of people are into like big gestures. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, if I saw it happening on the street, I would like intervene or like, um, I don't know, like, really big gestures, like making a movement that only lasts like a week or something. Um, yeah. And then when it comes to like, oh, okay, is there a time, like, is there any time in like real life or away from the internet where maybe I made someone feel uncomfortable um, in a sexual manner or something like that, or like private private conversations that you should be having, they're all big broad, if that makes sense. Like everyone wants to talk on the big screen where everyone else can see them, but then mm -hmm. when you want to have like the private conversations, it's like, oh wait, there's no audience here, so I'm not gonna. I'm not really gonna say anything here because there's no there's no mm -hmm. nothing in it for me if that makes sense. And I feel like people love the big gestures but not the actual Yeah, gestures. yeah. Yeah. It's called like I think they call it like virtue signaling. So you yeah. say all this shit online to just make yourself look like a good person and you're part of the crowd, you know? Mm. Like you're tick like ticking all the liberal boxes. Mm. Um honestly, like I not to be horribly cynical, but like I 
on it, if I see a video or something of like some guy on Instagram and like, oh, I saw this girl getting harassed and I intervened and like, you know how they do it for homeless people when they go up to them and give them money and they film. Mm. Like, if I see one. shit like that, I swear if I see shit like that, that is not helping. Like that I is just it. not helping. You know what, if you want to do that, just sit down with your mates and be like, look, this happened and this is how we should do that going forward as well. Like, let's talk about it. You don't need to like parade around. Like yeah. I think guys should absolutely post like advice. Just don't use real life scenarios with women like where you're out on the streets like doing that kind of thing and i've seen that before and it's just yeah. not helpful like with the whole thing with like big gestures and things like that i feel like sometimes obviously not personally for me but like sometimes i feel like it, people feel scared to actually do anything because they think and obviously you can correct me if i'm wrong yet but like people feel scared to do things or talk about things that are uncomfortable because they think a big gesture is going to be made of it if that makes sense like even if it's something simple as like um i don't know what i'm, I'm trying to like obviously not trivialize anything but i'm thinking of something like very minuscule in it um maybe even like looking at someone in the wrong way and making them feel uncomfortable it's obviously very very wrong but i feel like mm -hmm. those conversations aren't had because then people are worried that like oh is it going to turn obviously it is a big thing in the grand scheme of things but people need to have those uncomfortable conversations because I don't think there's anyone like who can realistic because as we saw the statistic sorry um what was it 97 percent of women in the uk say they've been um sexually assaulted right mm -hmm. and obviously that that's not all like that includes all forms of se sexual assault right so i don't think there's obviously there's that there's that quote going around saying that like oh every woman knows another woman with a story or has a story but man then pretend like they don't know any rapists if that makes sense but yeah. if you think about it, I don't think any man can, like, if you look at yourself, you must think at least one point in your life, you've made someone feel uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? Like, maybe you had, like, you sent a flirty text and it just wasn't on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything, do you know what I mean? And, like, I feel like people, is obviously very, very uncomfortable, but people need to start having those conversations in their, like, yeah. circles, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, the thing is, like, do you mean, like, women or men? Because I, I feel like with women, right, we oh, tell nice. each other like yeah. yeah guys i feel like you know what honestly i think such a big step is actually guys coming forward and saying like you know what there was this one time where i did x y and z mm. and looking back on it or even at the time i was like you know what i don't know if this is the right thing yeah and just being able to say that that happened this is what i learned from it blah 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 like you know how i sat here today and was like you know what i've had like internalized misogyny about women i've learned from it that's the climate i grew up in that's the reason why i had those thoughts but it was wrong and this is how i feel about it today that journey, we need to see that in men to be able to put their hands up more, not just saying like, but I haven't done that. Yeah, but you have done things. There's literally no way you couldn't have, you know, there are probably things that whether it's like making a sexist joke, whether it, whatever, like whether it's like you just sat, sitting there while hearing someone else make jokes about women or talking about their bodies or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, facts. Yeah. It's a, it's a long, long journey, I think, but I think these everyday course, things, somewhere, yeah, these everyday things will just make such a dent into into the at least the way we think about it and the way we talk about it. Um, yeah. I think I think there will be a lot of guys who come forward because they did during Me Too. Like there were some good celebrities kind of came forward and wrote blogs and stuff. I think like. What we're trying to say here is like you don't have to come forward and say like yeah once i did go on a date and like i did something really horrifically wrong blah 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 it's more just like those little things that we keep talking about um like, like staring and yeah 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 like and in your in your friendship groups the way you talk about girls and stuff you know but it's it's i think that that thing I think you guys might find that hard. I don't know, maybe you guys can comment on this. Like, not only confronting your friends, but talking publicly about, like, what you and your friends have done or, like, spoken about has not always been the best representation of women. Um, and, like, because I think there's also the fear of, like, being excluded by other men, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think yeah. That, I it's that typical lad yeah. behaviour, isn't it? Yeah. 
do you think like if you did like what what do you guys think like if you've challenged a friend like say suppose one of you said something right now which was like problematic like even okay let's 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 think it, let's maybe push this even more at the when beginning of this when podcast me a woman. yes yes <laughs> when Amy's use woman as an insult right no um, <laughs> like, oh my god! <laughs> wait, wait, wait! We're not, we're not saying. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. It's more just like your reaction was quite That's funny. Me, like, you, me, you should have called that out, man. I can't believe it. Oh, oh what are you talking about? Yeah, but, oh, you, oh. <laughs> but yeah, it's true. Anyway, what it's are you going to say? It's true. But, but what I'm saying is, like, there was a moment where, like, Hilton was like, "What are you trying to say?" Do you know what I mean? No, and then but it, that's not what I was like, saying, though. <laughs> do, you know, do, you know, do you know the worst thing is, yeah? Like, we wrote that joke previously, but AB changed it and made it problematic, the idiot. <laughs> no! Oh, my God. All he, had, all he had to say was, the, the most, like, the most closest we have to a woman on the podcast is, is Kyojin. But he didn't have to say Kyojin's shit take. Do you know what I mean? He made it so problematic. No, I just say you chat shit. I didn't say, I didn't say women chat I just say you chat shit. <laughs> because I'm a woman. Wow. Oh, but then, my. but then, okay, the reason is, yeah, the re- I think, I think you didn't mean it like that, but. Because you said the closest thing we have to a woman is him because he chats shit. Yeah. <laughs> did I say that? Did I say it? because he chats shit? I, 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 I yeah, didn't write you that did. point. Bro. You, you did, did say that. <laughs> well, that's not what I meant, man. Uh, for, the, for the audience, yeah, he, he fucked up. But he just means I chat shit. But like, I don't know why he added that part in. <laughs> yeah, because he chat shit. But that's the thing, though. Yeah. Like, it's, it's things yeah. like that where you, of course, we know who you are and we know you didn't yeah, mean yeah. something like that. But it's 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 like little little things like that that build up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I like Wait, don't use like, me as an example, bro. I didn't even say <laughs> no, that. Bro, bro no, I know you. Didn't. That's what I'm saying. You didn't. I'm I know saying you didn't. we know you're not like that. I'm but waiting as well, my fucking arm, man. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Do you know why this is good? You didn't mean it like that, right? And we clarified and we talked about it. That's all it took. Do you know what I mean? Rather than like someone else jumping and be like, yeah, I know, women all chat shit. Like, you know, and no, then it escalates. Like, you did, but you didn't, you didn't. <sighs> but, but, like there could have been someone who misunderstood it. So we asked and you said, oh, that's not what I meant. Calm, cool. I'm taking a joke, calm, I'm sick of this shit, man. I'm sweating right now, bro. I swear to God, fam, I'm actually sweating, fam. Guys, let's do a long pause so we can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the ending that's not coming out but that's a good example and that's like that's not even like at the expense of you because it's like actually it's it's like it shows you in a good light too because you clarified and you accepted like all right do you know i just don't feel uh, right don't, yeah. don't, 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 give de- don't give him redemption Man, I made he's example always, always been rude to me huh don't give him redemption he's always been rude to me he's called me a woman he said uh, why is that rude I'm a woman. he said i uh, trust takes because i'm a woman <laughs> He said, don't roll me into it. No, bro. Yeah, yeah. Just, listen, we're listen, calling listen. everybody out today. You, you just see, said, you see how said it spreads. you me, call me a woman. Like. What's, what's wrong with being a woman, huh? You know what? What's wrong with being a woman? You know what, AB, I, I get your point now. Just shut up, man. <laughs> listen, don't take anything I say seriously. Apparently, I chat shit, but it's okay. <clears throat> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. But do you know what I mean? Like, look, look. It's not you guys, but can you imagine this kind of conversation happening and escalating quite quickly without anyone saying anything? Of course. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It happens all the time. Um, even to be honest, like in the past when I've been part of like friendship groups, which have only been guys and they'll chat shit about women. And I remember in the past, I didn't say anything. I was just like, wow, this is awkward. This is weird. <laughs> like, mm. um, and I should have, I should have been like, what the hell are you doing? You know, mm. but I didn't because I think it's intimidating. Right. Yeah. So, my, I'm sorry, man. AB's stressed. Like, he sat there in like the mountains, like, swaying. Uh, I'm actually thinking about what I said. I can't let it, bro. Uh, You're there with the snow, like, breaking the sweat. Like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, man. I, oh, my God. That's it, man. No, no, you're good. You're good. I'm gonna report you. If anyone chat com- comes up be chatting shit, I'm still everyone from I don't care. Bro, no one's gonna chat shit. No we clarified yeah. the point. You better not, man. They we know, know that's not what you meant. 
we know that's not what you meant but the the, the thing that we're drawing a parallel because it's it's something as innocent as that um yeah yeah you know i, I mean? could like yeah yeah that's the point no but that's what we say bro we're on the same side <laughs> we agree yeah, yeah yeah like it was something so innocent yeah but if you look at it deeply like it, it is pretty misogynistic yeah but you know what it's it's a it's it's good to it's good to like do because like instinctively as a human right if someone says like look you've done wrong you're obviously going to be like what the hell like you yeah. jumped out of your seat like you know what i mean like <laughs> you're going to do that that's your instinctive response it's self-preservation so how can we deal with that how can we like go right of course people need to defend themselves it's so important i need to defend myself how do we do that while still listening to other people making sure like yeah cool i've got my ground covered like fine i didn't mean it like that x y and z thinks this how can we at least talk about it because you can you can like resolve it you know i know we're not you talking about this example anymore don't worry i'm talking about like a general yeah. way we have these conversations i think also like i don't know if this is com completely unrelated yet but i think also a lot of the time like of accepting what our first thought is and then still being able to think differently to that if that makes sense so obviously you were saying um oh, what were you saying like about your first thought being okay that girl's bossy and stuff like that but obviously you, like you blame yourself well, i don't know if you blame yourself or not but it's your it's just your first thought if that makes sense as long as your second thought is where oh wait why did i say that and i feel like more people need to do that if that makes sense do you mm. know what i mean and i think like this, this is obviously like a really serious one but you know um so last time there was a lot of people like being outed as well uh, as like rapists and stuff in it and when i was yeah. like really really young yeah i would like my first thought would be like damn i know that guy like i don't think he could ever do that and then obviously like the more you see the conversation around you're like wait why am i like so ready to give the benefit of the doubt to something so serious and it's like it's almost involuntary at first you're like wait i don't think that guy can do that but then also having like the the i don't know the thought of mind to be like actually no i wasn't there i don't know what's happened he definitely could have done that and there's a girl who's like shaking up from this and it's obviously going through a very hard time so not to like be like oh he couldn't have done that that's my friend do you know what i mean because mm. <clears throat> yeah. that's the thing like the people who do this are people mm. and like we said before they are people who are like friends you know most of the time um it's not these like crazy evil figures in the dark i i remember like yeah yeah, yeah like like the first comment like the first time this with the sexual assault like i remember speaking to one of his friends about it and he was like he's such a nice guy mm. like he might be you know <laughs> he might be like fine that's irrelevant this still happened mm. um and actually like that's the thing like i i honestly like if if your friend is accused of something like this, even on like the most minor level, honestly, I think that one of the worst things you can do is like dismiss it because one, maybe, maybe he hasn't done it fine. Like, let's explore that. Let's at least have the conversation clarify. And if he has, are you really going to enable him? Mm -hmm. Are you going to let him continue down this path? Is that actual friendship? What is friendship then? You know? Sometimes like being a friend means you do walk away or you do point out like you fucked up. Mm. Hold your like, friends yeah. accountable. I feel like the man needs to start doing that more often. Mm. Definitely. I think it, do you think it would take a lot for like you to be able to walk away from a mate because of something like even as like, yeah, he was inappropriate or not even like, but you know what I mean. If I don't know if if someone's like secure with themselves that they know themselves and that like I don't think. Like, I think in our friendship of... group, like if if one of you two, for example, said that I said something inappropriate, I think we can all handle it. Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, we'll call each other out in it, but if someone's yeah. like, if someone's still like going on this path, I I don't like I wouldn't like. I feel like we would be able to cut someone off, like if someone was like, yeah, like, obviously, if you see that there's like, one guy, there's like different levels. Obviously, if you went out and I saw it, did you just cut me off? So sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad, my bad. It's calm. It's done now. You already cut me off. So you must <laughs> oh, continue. Sorry, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You took a pause in it. Well, I don't know if you like. Oppressed his voice, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I was gonna say that obviously, like if it was like like 
you know I mean? Like, they went out and attacked someone. I'm like, I would be like, what the fuck? I can't associate myself with that kind of person because that's mad to me, innit? So obviously, there should be some sort of punishment where, like, it's reported and stuff like that. But if they said something inappropriate, obviously, it's really, really bad. But I would speak to them about it rather than cut them off. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. What about, what yeah. about your mate? has been like in a relationship where he did yeah. treat her quite badly like he was quite toxic I've, how I've do you intervene conversation with people before with, uh, my oh interesting okay yeah but that was more on a, like a on like about cheating like oh mm. you're an idiot why would you do that just like break yeah, yeah. you don't want to be with her or if you do want mm. to be with her and stop cheating do you know what i mean um but not conversations about i don't think i've had like anyone say to me this has happened or i've seen this happen yeah mm. yeah i if think it was, if it was sorry no i was gonna say without giving up too too many details i feel like i've been friends with somebody who was um i think we think of the same person uh, oh, yeah who was yeah. abusive in their relationship um I'd say there's more I could have done. I definitely did call them out on it um, in private. Um, but yeah, I've, they, I probably could have been more um, more assertive, definitely. But obviously, like, w- with guys, it's like, when you're calling someone out, you're, if you're, because we were very close, like, I was very close to this person. Uh, so it's almost like I was trying to preserve our friendship at the same time, do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but yeah it's painful yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. very painful yeah it is a bit of a it's, it's a bit of a sticky one but yeah so yeah we don't talk at all now um so it, it, it came to a point where where i cut him off basically uh, and i think that wow. was a big factor in it because like you you almost want them to like view the well he, uh, he cut me off because yeah what i did was shit and it's like a point proven of, you know what I mean? But I don't know if people do, but at least yeah. you did your bit. Mm. One of the things like... I keep thinking about, yeah, sorry, go on. Say, say that. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I, I, I think I recognise that before cutting him off, I probably could have been a bit more proactive and, and made him realise what, what he was doing was, was wrong. One of the things me and my friends always talk about, like it's often too regular, I think, is um how the school that we went to like mm. perpetuate a lot of these behaviors and heighten yeah. them quite a lot and like even then to be honest even i didn't call it out then it was just like the norm do you know yeah. what i mean i think our school was actually mad at this sort of stuff so the example um, i gave it, it was during yeah. high school but yeah like you know that's what reminded me of it because like, i'm sure this happened during that mm. school like, oh know, do you know who i'm talking about as well yeah. <laughs> maybe actually this okay, this shit yeah. was happening left right and center though do you know yeah, what I mean? Specifically, like the teachers, or well, most of the teachers refused to get involved with that as well. Bro, the yeah. teachers. Like there was right. one teacher I remember that used to like have the girl sit in her office, so yeah. that the guy wouldn't be able to like interact with her during lunchtime. But then I remember like the management side of the teachers being like, "Yeah, we haven't seen it, so it hasn't happened," kind of thing. But it's you crazy. Like, like this. That's that's the the same the same sort of reaction we have today. Like you you're doing something to take. To, to the girl but no one's yeah, actually yeah. speaking to the guy about anything do you know what I mean yeah yeah it's actually like the stuff that used to happen in that school man like so I remember but I think sixth form I don't know what happened but it just boiled over um I think one of the like so 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 like throughout school like these guys were mental like they were literally like going after you left right and center like of you know teenage boys are like it's you know people say like as a stereotype like they're insane this is like mm-hmm. another level because they just do not care. I remember in sixth form, um, actually he still lives quite close to me. There was this guy who was in the year below and he, I, I like walked past him in the sixth form common room and he's like telling all his mates that like, oh, she really likes me. And he's just like painting me out to be this like, yeah, in his words, like this like slightly thing that really wants him. It, well, guys, I'll tell you later who it was that like, you'll actually laugh. <laughs> I'd spoken to him once over Snapchat because he messaged me. And that was it. So I walked up to him and this group of guys straight up and I was like, when is it, when have we like even spoken? When have we spoken? Mm. I know it was once on Snapchat. I can get out of the chat where I urge you. Go on. Um, so wait, I wait, wait, what? You said, you said this in front of the group? Yeah, I said it in front of the oh, group okay. of guys because right, right. I was like, you know what? I need to jump in. I need to like set the record straight. Yeah. 
so they're all obviously laughing at him and he's embarrassed so he starts like trying shit back whatever I ignored it and he then came up to me I, <laughs> I shouldn't he came up to me the next day in the uh, in the common room and he's like oh when are you coming over and I was like coming over where and he goes to my my yard and I was like well why would I and he got out a 20 pound note and threw it at me and he was like what yeah yeah to like imply that I'm a fucking shoe Okay. Um, I think you should have spat in your face. You should have spat in his face then. Yeah, it was what? it was actually so like bad. in the middle, in the middle like of the grab, room. Grabbed my arm and twisted it really hard. Um, and that that to be honest, like my friends. So, so like maybe you know who I was friends with and stuff as well. Like I'm not that that group. We were all like, yeah, what an idiot. That was it. That was the height of it. Like now, if I if that happened to like my little sister, I don't know that I have one or daughter, I'd be like, what the hell? Like I'm going straight to management. Like that is insane. Mm. Um, but because that kind of stuff used to happen in our school like daily, no one even questioned it. It used to be very normal. There was just so much like weird stuff happening all the time. Um, yeah, and like, I I wish like I think it's like a part of this is also like teaching like the younger generation, like really young generation, how to deal with this sort of stuff. Because I think it took me so long to realize it was a problem and to speak out about it because we just never did for so long. We were just like, yeah, this happens, you know? I was thinking about this, like, in terms of a, a topic that we should speak about. Um, like, one of the, the root causes, I think, is, like, obviously the over-sexualization, but from a, from a really early age, like, the access to pornographic material um, and explicit, explicit material is mm-hmm. it's so easy to... To access so someone like you said in year six or that sort of age like it's not surprising that i wouldn't be surprised if, if that's what they were influenced by do you know what i mean yeah can i tell like a in hindsight it's yes. not that funny at the time it was kind of funny yeah so like i work with kids yeah and there was like a kid who would like he would be at the computer and like every time we would come to that section of like the class yeah he would like turn off all the tabs and then run away. So I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? And he'd be like, I'm How checking what? the cricket score. Uh, yeah, seven or year eight. He's like, I'm cricket checking the cricket score. score I'm done. Yeah, so he's like, he kept leaving, kept leaving. Yeah, and then one of my boys was like, why don't we just check the history in it? See, like, what is, what is he running away from? Yeah, <laughs> I swear to God, yeah. It's, it's not like it's a little kid, yeah. All I saw was a man licking vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Also, like this kid didn't even like turn like turn on private mode, nothing, or clear the history. He was he was going rogue. He's like, I'm gonna... <laughs> wow. Yeah, he didn't even spell it correctly. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, That's really like, no, I can't have like, this. <laughs> the thing is, like, look, like you can't you can't suppress those sexual feelings in kids or whatever. It's part of growing up, right? But if mm. what like if the first access you have to sex is like porn, which is obviously really problematic yeah. in many ways and the way it paints women, it's gonna mm. obviously fuck you up, you know? Um unless like you know like the thing is I say this, but then there's obviously like a I don't want to stereotype, but yeah, like white families do talk about it and they like, you know, give their kids the talk. I have mm. I have a friend from university, this white white guy who was telling me, yeah, I used to watch it on the family computer in the living room. What? <laughs> wait, 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 say that again. Wait, what? I thought it was just going to be like they talk about the birds and the bees, not that they watch it like as a Sunday dinner or put on the TV. Not as a family, but like that's how like accepted oh, it was. Like, yeah, if you need watch to watch it together. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, he... no, but it was comfortable to the point you can just sit in the living room, like on the family scared. computer. Yeah. Like, are his family in the room at this point? No, but they've already given him the talk of like, yeah, if you want to put porn, it's fine, but X, Y, Z. Like, Crazy. can you imagine having that chat with your parents? <laughs> I would have <laughs> <do that. laughs> exactly. I've never had that talk with my parents. Um, yeah, I've never had that talk. Though. Do you know what? <laughs> I, I, th- I think my my parents are pretty open. Like, even like my dad, who's Pakistani, like it wouldn't be uncomfortable for us to talk about something like that. Oh, oh that's um, nice. I, yeah, I think that's a really good thing. Like, that's a really good thing. Yeah, definitely. Kyojin's gonna love this, but it's a conversation that needs a lot of nuance. Hey, <laughs> like, God. I think people need to be open enough, or parents need to be open enough with their kids to to teach them boundaries in terms of um, like how to how to deal with the people of the opposite sex, but also yeah. not to like, not them, not right? be too 
yeah, not to overexpose it. That's exactly yeah. the correct word. Yeah, not to overexpose it. So and also just like, like question it, right? Like, yeah. yeah, you can consume it, enjoy it, like most people do, but be aware of like what it portrays and like the damage it can cause. And know like, okay, you know what? This is not almost the real world. When people start conflating that with like, yeah, you can bring this into the real world. Like these fantasies are all like normal. Like some of them obviously are, but like, you know what I mean? You can't expect to, tr yeah, you can treat women like that. You just can't. Mm. Um, and that's where like all this, obviously very aggressive hypersexual behavior that we're talking about in schools and whatnot starts to occur when people aren't open about it when people um, make it a stigma and then when they do start feeling comfortable with it they consume material which is obviously very problematic it's like this horrible cycle yeah and <clears throat> Amy's just been munching. Yeah, like <laughs> I've seen you. I've seen you like throw your diet down the toilet just in like the past ten minutes, like crisps, bro, bro, chocolate, bro, I'm so hungry, biscuits. Bro. I have no, I, and I can't eat. I have no healthy snacks, bro. I have an orange, but I can't be asked to peel it, bro. <laughs> I think he's still shaking up. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, he, he's stress eat, eating. He's stress eating. Right? <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm in the same since I got called out, man. Speaking about the comments, bro, it's okay. We don't get any comments. <laughs> and I don't care about that, bro. I, I, just, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, just to change the subject slightly, because I feel like it's getting a little bit later. But um, so obviously, before you spoke about uh, Meghan, Meghan Markle's situation, uh, mm -hmm. did you guys watch the interview? Like, just open question to all of you guys. Not fully, no. Maybe? I think I, I've watched most of it. Yeah, I've seen, I'm just waiting for someone to do like the best bits and do you know what I'm saying? Just cut it down. Highlights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fam. I need a match of the day session, fam. Oh, we, we might as well give you some highlights then. I think the the craziest thing to me, obviously, was, you know, when uh, Megan was saying people were having concerns about like the colour of her baby in the royal family. Yeah. So they're talking about like, can I just say as well, yeah, I don't know if, if you, you guys picked up on this yet, but Oprah's such a shit interviewer, fam. Like, She's <laughs> terrible, man. I don't know. Like the memes are great though, of it. from from the interview. Megan would be like, "Oh yeah, there was a time where I, I just felt like I didn't want to be alive," and then she would like speak about it for twenty minutes, and then she go like, "How were you feeling at that time?" She just told you, bro. Like, you don't need to <laughs> ask her again. She told you clearly. Yeah. Like just you know, carry on with the interview. But maybe she was trying to like clarify for the audience. I don't know. They should have got Joe Rogan on that, man. <laughs> I think he. <laughs> so, 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 have you ever taken TMZ? TMZ? <laughs> <laughs> Have you had elk meat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, or was there anything you wanted to add, sorry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no. Like, my main message there was just like, it's a combination of a lifelong, you know, amount of trauma. Um, we're, getting, we're talking about it. And like the fact that I can sit here with three guys um, and talk about it is really, really nice. And the fact that you guys are receptive to it and talk about it to one another. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. AB does not identify as a man. Um, <laughs> he identifies um, as a misogynist. Yeah, yeah like Wasteful. literally. <laughs> Listen, no more jokes for the, to the end of the episode, okay? Listen, yeah, I, yeah. I saw, but I that's, that's my bit done. Yeah. And like, no, go, on, sorry. go on. The thing is, like, you know, if we, if we're talking about International Women's Day and then Mother's Day, and then obviously what happened to Sarah Brad, like Megan coming about about her story. I think it actually validated a lot of like black women and women of color as well, like. With all these like little things that people like make you feel weird about, like, oh, is it me? Is it them? But that was a real moment. I think that she did shed shed like good light on it. Um yeah. and yeah, it, it's quite it was quite important, I think, actually, in a week like that for like the woman of color's perspective to come in. Yeah. Um and and like even to think like, man, she's obviously like light skinned, she could actually probably be white passing in some instances as well. So yeah. it's all these things. But man, it's been a it's been a heavy week for women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Proper, bro. Yeah. You know, like watching that interview, yeah. Obviously, it's like the the racism part is obviously like a serious issue with the media and the way the mm. media like has certain headlines for people of color and then certain headlines for their like white counterparts and things like that. But you know, when I was watching the interview, I was thinking to myself, like, we're basically watching keeping up with the royals. Do you know what I mean? Like. Mm. I think there was there were some things which I felt like I couldn't relate to. You know when they talk about like the Disney deal and like the Netflix deal 
and they're like yeah we had to provide for ourselves and i was thinking well like everyone does do you know what i mean like the the part where they said they cut off the security that was really sad in it but i don't have mm. that much sympathy for royals if that makes sense i have yeah, sympathy yeah. for Meghan Markle as a human being but then i look at like harry and like some of the things that he's done in the past like yeah he's worked for like the army um he said some mm-hmm. mad racist things in the past and i feel like sometimes we like overlook those things just because they're royals and stuff like that. or even like the the treatment of raheem sterling over the years has been crazy crazy yeah like, yeah obviously i understand it's oprah and it's the royals obviously compared to them raheem sterling is not going to get the positive support that they're going to get if that makes sense but it's not like it's something new do you know what i mean we're mm. only paying attention now because it's a royal who said it on oprah and like, it's nothing new like yeah. you know in a way like why are we surprised like mm. that the royal family is allegedly racist when the entire British yeah, exactly. family based off of racism <laughs> like why are people shocked yeah. who do you guys think it was yeah? that asked the question like who, question, who do you yeah? think was concerned about the color of the baby all of them what, like 100 percent. that conversation happened loads the fact yeah. that like it happens in like south asian culture of course it's going to happen with, like the royal family do you know yeah, what i mean exactly. I think this is such mm. a such thing Guys, who would have to check to be a royal? <laughs> what? what? They'll, never leave, they'll never let you be a royal fam. They'll never let you like be the... Oh, God. How much toes if I have to, man? <laughs> <laughs> what did he, I missed that. What did he say? Well, he said why, he'd why be, he, he, he would be Pete Charles if he had to. <laughs> I don't think I would want to be a royal, you know. You can't live life properly. Why yeah. would you want to be a royal? Yeah, yeah, shit. Like, there's other ways to make money, man. I just, I just want to do something dirty to a royal, man. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you can chill out, man. <clears throat> you know, Abe. Hey, before you know how you were saying, like, um, a lot of South Asian and like brown and black women can relate to that. Yeah, I think there's a lot of like talk about how the marriage dynamic as well of like marrying into, uh, like. The guy's family was very similar to how it is in like brown culture and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like it doesn't even matter what her family is doing or what what's <laughs> going on there. It's like she's just completely swallowed whole by the like the royal family. That's her entire identity now. It's mm. quite funny because you see like these memes coming out where they've like edited the captions, you know, like the subtitles. Mm. And one of them was like, and then the queen said, Oh my god, what will people think? Like, which is such like a brown culture thing um, yeah. and that's exactly like the dynamic there but it just shows do you know what it shows like the royal family is that way because they're built on like hundreds of years of old of tradition mm. and brown families are still stuck in those like century old traditions like we have not progressed like that's yeah. not good th- that's not a good thing at all um mm. so like a very very silly question but it's like a commonly asked question uh who who gets to sit at the front of the car the mum or the wife Mom, 100%. I was just joking about that question. <laughs> you, don't, you don't actually have to answer. <laughs> I, thought, I thought everyone was answering. <laughs> yeah, go on, no, I, go thought you, I thought that was a serious question as well. No, no, I was just, yeah. I, was just I, like, I, I, I feel like I had to stay quiet on that one, man. <laughs> I, I, I got, I, go on, you can answer it. Who, you, who your wife's me. driving the car, maybe. Guys, yeah. what do you call a white guy ejaculating? What? What? What do you call a white guy ejaculating? Oh my god! Oh, oh, what do you? What do you <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you froze on the ginger nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's time to kick, kick him off now. Yeah, you're gonna get complaints, baby. <laughs> like there's so many. Why? The demographic that you got, like women, ginger. Uh, well, we we don't get any white listeners anyway, man. You know. Who- <laughs> You know who's the most sensitive out of all the groups, bro? Ginger people, man. They're going to come for you, I swear to God. All right, cool. So, um, obviously, today was a bit more of a serious topic. Well, a much more serious topic than we talk about usually. Firstly, we would like to thank you, A, um, for coming on and uh, sharing your experiences with us. Um, I know, obviously, it couldn't be easy. Um, and I think what you spoke about would resonate with a lot of people. And as as you said, obviously... Um, before when we were saying like oh it would be great for you to come on obviously it wasn't a great thing um, that certain uh-huh. things happened um, but we're appreciative of you, you, of you being able to share that with the audience and also share that with us as well because I feel like 
I'm going to start my takeaway from this as well, just a little bit early, but when you were telling us some of these things, it's like, some of it is unbelievable. It, mm. in sense, so not, not like I don't believe it happened, but it's like, oh, I can't believe that thing is just, that that has happened to you, if that makes sense. Like, you know, the, we, the thing you were saying at school where someone threw a 20 pound note at you, I was like, mm. what the fuck? This is just crazy. But <clears throat> I think the other main thing as well is just thinking that like, yeah, everyone feels in danger um, at one point or another, mm-hmm. which a lot of people have been saying, oh yeah, well, men feel in danger outside as well. But I feel like what the sense I've gotten from you today and also talking to other people is this like conf- constant fear of what could go wrong and being on edge all the, all the time. Um, yeah. And obviously it's, it's, it's not something that we as men experience being like, oh, every time I step out of my house, I have to be worried or even in my house, I have to be worried. Um, so obviously, thank you for sharing that um, with us today. Thank you for having me. Um, any takeaways, guys? Or um, I think I think the main thing is just recognizing that the conversation should be more centered around the behaviors of men rather than the behaviors of women. So, like in 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 cases where uh sexual assault or sexual harassment happens we, like we, we've said before like we always think about uh the woman first like what what she was doing or how she behaved what she could have done and even if she did anything different it wouldn't have changed the fact that a man was prepared to do something like that um so the, the conversation needs to be centered around you know men's attitudes and men's behaviors uh, so i think that's the main thing really maybe no, man, I agree, man. I feel like a lot of this. Um, I hope, first of all, I hope that this momentum don't like die out, like a mm. lot of other things. And um, I feel like a lot of these things for it to progress, uh, it needs to be like an internal conversation first. Like I feel like a lot of people need to g check themselves before anything, um, before like calling people out, etc. And uh, I feel like men need to have a more proactive um, role in this movement as well. Um, Cause women have been doing what they can for speaking up for, for like years, you know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> they've been taking it, like it got to a stage where they have to take precautions to avoid men, mm. do you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's time for them to use the voices, the power, to get me the authority, whatever, um, to help the situation. Cause what happened to Sarah E, could have happened to any, like, it could have been our sister, our moms, like, it could have been anyone, do you know what I'm saying? And it's mad that I have to use that like, analogy for people to realise that. Yeah. It mm. could hit, it could hit close to anyone's homes, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, but yeah, man, I feel like a lot, a lot, a lot I feel like it, start, it, needs to, it needs to start with men now, because women's been, women have had to do that for years, but and clearly not, like, any shit changes, you know what I'm saying? So, like it's time for yeah. us, us guys to um, to start, start start playing a role, man. Do you get me? I said, do you get me? Oh, shut up, man. I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, what about you? A hey, all. Um. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I mean, I, I resonate a lot with the points that you guys are talking about. The narrative definitely needs to change, and I think. I would also say, I mean, I think what you guys have said has been so important, and I, I suppose, I don't know your audience, but to the women listening to this, I suppose my kind of, I have talked about some really, really difficult things, and it wouldn't be entirely truthful to say that it gets better, because as I said, this is like a lifelong struggle, but you do get stronger, because I think one of the most powerful like anecdotes is solidarity and with so many women speaking out it's had such a healing effect on so many of us yes triggering but I hope this is an opportunity where we really can stand together and this time with the men who want to make a difference yeah yep thank you uh and then just to finish off um we're cancelling AB for his previous comments as well all right goodbye (laughs) No, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. We'll have to finish on that, maybe. I'm joking. <laughs>
we don't have to know. <laughs> I feel like obviously I don't want to end on a joke this week. Is there any like uh-huh. organizations or anything? So anyone who's like been affected by any of the things that they've listened to today or similar situations that they could mm-hmm. go go to, basically. Um to put you on the spot. Yeah, too. there's there's no, no no that's absolutely fine. I mean there's there's quite a lot I talked about today, which touched on like obviously sexual assault, harassment, domestic abuse, etc. Um, so just like there's various avenues. So Karma Nirvana is a really great one for survivors and victims of like honor-based abuse in South Asian families. Um, there's also kind of like some really great organizations. Like so there's obviously Rape Crisis, um, England and Wales, which offers some really, really great support um, for children who are experiencing some of this. There's obviously NSBCC. Um, Respect is a really good domestic abuse organization. There's a revenge porn helpline, that's literally the name. Um, and then there's things also, uh, also like, you know, specifically for um, women of color and South Asian women. So I mentioned Carmen Nirvana, but there's also South or Black Sisters. Um, and then things for men. So there's a National Male Support Service. Um, there's respect, uh, not respect, sorry, that, I got that wrong. There's um, that, oh, I'm trying to get all my thoughts together. There's Male Survivors Alliance. There's Mankind Initiative. So. There's a lot out there and I'm really happy like when you guys do post this to kind of provide some links, etc. Because I know I just reeled off quite a few of them. Yeah. So yeah, but there's definitely things out there. Yeah, of course. Thank you for that. Um and obviously in the YouTube video and like we'll have add these to our link tree as well for anyone who's mm-hmm. been affected um by these issues or um wants to reach out. Um so yeah, thank you for coming on. Um and um yeah, let's make changes together. <clears throat> Goodbye. Thank you. You guys have been saying goodbye as well. you meant to say goodbye as well with me, man. Come on, the normal intro outro is you say goodbye. Yeah, I think it's frozen. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> 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 okay, he's just zoned out. <laughs> uh...